Hello, it's me, Sarah, and I've been trying to make this particular video for a few days now, but it's been really, really difficult, though I think it's a really important video to make. And this is the kind of video that nobody really wants to have to make, but like I said, I feel it's important. I got up early morning, March 3rd, and got on YouTube to check a few things, and found that my very good friend Alex Burke, also known as Lord Sardonic on YouTube, passed away March 2nd. Now, Alex had been ill all of his life, and the last time that I talked to him was when he popped up on MSN a little over a couple of weeks ago to tell me the news that he was going to die. His last kidney failed, and he told me that he didn't want to get dialysis and he didn't want to try and get another kidney. And he was just pretty much tired of all the hospital visits and surgeries. Me and Alex talked a lot on YouTube in the beginning. And from there, we would use Skype every night to chat. Sometimes we would chat for six, seven, nine hours at a time. And we would have these really deep and heavy conversations about life and death because it was always preying on his mind. And so we got to know each other over a short span of time, and I would tell him, you know, very personal things about myself, and he would share very personal things about his life, and we just kind of connected, I guess, and became fast friends. One thing about Alex was, is he was very, very bright. Sometimes too bright. Me and him would sit up late, and we would usually end up talking about God, and he would tell me, you know, I need proof, I just can't believe, I've got to have proof for this and that, and most of our big, long, deep, heavy discussions ended up centering around God. And for a little while there, the two of us sort of liked each other, but it didn't get very far other than flirting here and there. And it was really hard because when we would talk, you know, and have these long conversations, every once in a while he would explain to me that when he got close with someone that he would try to push them out because he didn't want them to get hurt if anything bad would ever happen to him. He was so paranoid, though, about driving me out and keeping me from getting hurt because he was always thinking about other people, you know, besides himself. And while he would tell me that he wanted to push me out, he would send me these, you know, long emails telling me that, you know, apologizing, he didn't want to drive me crazy talking about his health issues and that he didn't want to lose me and he just didn't want to stop talking. And I didn't want to stop talking to him either. Then we had a fight. He was very fed up with my kind of help. He was tired of hearing that I was praying for him. He was tired of hearing that the people in my church were praying for him. He was just very fed up with all of it at that point, and so everything just kind of slowed down between us. And there were a few messages, you know, here and there, like, how are you doing, and just kind of checking in, but not at all like before, the way we used to talk every night. And then, eventually, I just didn't hardly hear from him at all until a little over two weeks ago when he popped up on MSN and for the first time ever in my time knowing him asked me to pray for him. And he explained to me his situation and that he was going to die and that the doctors had given him just two weeks. And he didn't want anyone to know and I understood that because he just said that he didn't think people would understand where he was coming from and why he'd made this decision not to go on with any treatments. And I asked him, because if I hadn't, I would have thought about it for the rest of my life. I asked him if he had accepted the Lord, or if he wanted to pray that prayer with me right then and now and settle where he was going to end up forever. And then he said that he already had. He told me, that he had a real peace about where he was going to be after he passed away, and that he was very comfortable and very ready. It was the last time that we talked. Shortly after our discussion, he put up a lot of videos on YouTube that were sent to me privately because I think you had to um, be like his friend on YouTube to get sent these videos. And in these uh, particular videos, he was very open about his illness and uh, sharing a lot of different things and just really wanting to help people who were in the same 
a boat or situation as himself. This is the very same person that told me that he did not like to let people in, that he didn't like to share things about his illness with people, that he put on this entirely different thing to kind of protect everyone around him and protect himself, that he didn't want to share his poetry because it was very personal and very private. And there he was in those videos talking about all that he had been through and just really trying to help other people who were going through really rough times. It was like a complete transformation, a complete turnaround from the person that I'd gotten to know after that uh, time period. And that's when I knew that God had finally sunk into him. So I guess what I'm trying to say to anyone out there who is witnessing to somebody and talking to somebody about God and they, they just don't believe it because they need proof or they can't understand the scripture, just keep trying. Keep praying. You know, don't bug them about it, but don't give up. Because you can reach anyone, no matter how hopeless, no matter how hard it seems. With God, all things are possible, so don't give up. If I could say something to Alex's parents, who must be going through a really rough time right now, it would be this. You raised an amazing son. He was bright, funny, talented, and had a great heart. He touched so many lives, including mine, and probably for the first time in his life, he's not hurting anymore, and he's alright, and he's in heaven. And right now, he's probably looking down at all of us sad people and just shaking his head. But Alex is the kind of person that you just don't ever forget, and I won't ever forget him. Now if I may, I'd like to share four poems that Alex wrote for me and sent to me through YouTube messaging. Watching her soar from below in the sewers that are his home, wondering why the graceful angel keeps looking down into his dwelling, wondering why she keeps smiling down like she wants to save his broken soul. He looks up to watch the angel, tears in his cold, deep blue eyes, knowing too well what she's thinking, to help him through this hell that traps him in this cold sewer. Why does he live there, away from all the colors of the world? He looks up one more time. This time, his eyes catch the angels, just in time to see the twinkle in her eyes. He cries a little more as he steps back to the shadows in which he came leaving behind a torn piece of paper with the cold forgotten words, that which was banished, he can never be saved. And this is the second poem. Watching your voice flying through the sky like angels without wings from such a slim tender face, only to sing the songs, the ones of redemption with silence of hope. But this angel has no wings. She cannot fly, just like a normal man, Yet she soars about the rest, watching from the other side, just to ask her God to save this fallen soul. Fear grips his broken soul. Why would an angel so sweet try so hard to mend the tears of that so cold and old? Why save his cold lost soul? Does this angel really know how hard it is for this boy to even see his world's worth? Does she want to see his soul at those golden gates when she comes to rest her head? Why this little boy's soul, when others lay closer to her door? And now the third one. Wonder if she even knows the life that her smile saved. With one small movement of her lips, the voice would bring back hope. He had fallen years ago, yet one soul could save his. But that soft, tender smile picked a man off the ground who had lost all hope of being saved wonder what lies behind that golden heart. I love you, Alex. And until next time, goodbye.